Well, welcome back here to our new episode here of Guide Unlocked. And uh, we're still in Italy, in Florence, and uh, I have another dignitary of implant dentistry and of dentistry legend, Professor Massimo Simio. Uh, Massimo and I, we have been uh, also working together for a long time. We're, we're personal friends, we're professional colleagues, and uh, we have published together. So. Massimo, welcome to our program and to our podcast. It was a pleasure. How do you feel here in your own country? Is um, you know, it's a little more comfortable than traveling so much. <laughs> At least I'm close to home. <laughs> in, 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 in a nice, wonderful city like Florence. I mean, this is like not a, not a specific question, but like you live in Milan, and like Florence is such a beautiful city. How many times per year do you come to Florence? to see this beautiful cultural city? Oh, I have come to Florence about a couple of times a year, but never to visit the city, but just to work for lectures or courses. Ah, no, a couple of times in Florence that happens every year. So unlock us the Italian secret. So when you have to go somewhere in Italy, where do you go? Like this is like just for pleasure. Usually I go to Sicily. Mm. Okay. So when the, during summertime or, or uh, you know springtime, because I love the 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 sea of Sicily, I love the culture of the cuisine and you know, all the dishes, sure. the wines, a lot of good stuff in Sicily. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you. Okay, so let's uh, start with dentistry. So, like, uh, as we always want to do, we want to unlock some, you know, potential, like maybe secrets, something <laughs> misbeliefs. So, in the area of biomaterials, there is so much hype. And there's so many dentists think that like, you know, grafts work, grafts don't work. Uh, they don't know if they need to use autogenous. You have like 30, 40 years of experience with biomaterials. Yeah. What is the, what is the real and, and we need also a lot of research on that the pathology. Yeah. The reality is that, uh, there are many biomaterials, but not all the bio biomaterials are the same. They are good biomaterials and bad materials. <clears throat> and uh, for uh, uh, the customer, it's very difficult to understand what to use and to make a choice. So it's most important thing is to go and read the literature and find the one that has been tested in the, with the kind of an evidence uh, to, to make the right choice because they are really bad biomaterials. And also good biomaterials are not as good as autogenous bone chips. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to think that with uh, just using biomaterial, we can do everything. We can do small things, but we have to do big things, big regenerations. And we have to mix autogenous bone chips at least 80% and uh, saving it 20% 20, 20 for the uh, uh, biomaterial. And, okay, so like, you know, obviously like you're very strong on autogenous bone. And then using biomaterials, good biomaterials for like a, an enhancing volume. But you know, like being based in the US and you're based in Europe, why, in your opinion, is there this huge difference between like the US being so allograft focused and Europe is more like xenograft focused? And, and do you see like there's a, they're both good or they're different? Can we use both of them? I eat. I used the uh, allograft uh, in the early days when I was uh, very often in the United States so we're using that material. And then I started to use uh, inorganic bovidone and uh, really I don't see any, you, any big difference between the two materials. In Europe, in the, uh, we don't use so much allograft because uh, the regulation doesn't allow you to use it. So. With the bovine bone, everything is easier, very, very much available. And so I think the main difference was the regulation. But I didn't see very big thing uh, and this logical difference between the two of them. So like, you know, I, I always wanted, when, it, when people ask me this question, I'm, I'm always like in this uh, dilemma because I feel that like one big, huge difference is not so much biological, but it's like the resorption time. And so many of our augmentations that we do, like, you know, develop a contour especially with aesthetic benefits or maintaining a, a graft volume. And I feel that the xenograft has a long-term stability. Yeah. So 
for you, do you see that same or do you feel like it doesn't matter? I think that is very important, but for that reason, we don't want to have uh, too much biomaterial that is linear, this, this uh, remaining in the regenerated bone forever. So if we have some particles remaining because you're using only 20, 30 percent, it's okay. But if you have a, a huge percentage of uh, inorganic bovine bone remaining in the regenerated bone, that could be a problem in the future because uh, in case of infections or preimplantitis, you can be the implant, uh, preimplantitis involving secondary the part alien that are still in the bone and kind of expanding the yeah. amount of the lungs. Yeah. This well, is something that we have seen. So that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. So like, for example, when, when people ask me, like, hey, what graft material should I use in treating a periodontitis defect? I always say, like, well, after you clean it out and after you decon yeah. decontaminate the surface, I would not use a xenograft because so you never know. So then an allograft is better. But for rigid augmentation, of course, my preference is the xenograft. Yeah, yeah, me too. Okay, so let's go to an, another question. Like, you know, you know, you you have a lot of ideas. Tell us something that you you think like dentists need to be careful about. I think that um, in the younger generation, there is too much involvement with uh, uh, guided search, like digital guided search, guided search, which is a fantastic instrument. It's very useful, very important but they need to learn to do surgery. They need to use their hands. They need to know where to place an implant, how parallel should be from the metal teeth and each other, and to learn the position in the patient. And uh, in uh, some cases, not in all the cases, when it's necessary, use the digital technology for guided uh, implant positioning mainly when you're more real in terms where it's a little bit risky, but they should not abuse and be able to do only guided surgery. This is an important message for the surgeons. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about the world of, uh, you know, electrical vehicles, Tesla, or you think about planes, we don't really want to go into a plane where there's no pilot anymore. Exactly. The pilot needs to know how to fly. A driver needs to know how to drive a car. And in case of... Uh, Problem, you need to know how to remove the stent and to continue your surgery with your hands. Right. Because that could happen. Yeah. Thank well, you. Well, I I'm really, uh, yeah, thank you, Massimo. Thank and you, everybody. Thank you for hosting us in Italy. Yes. Because yeah. we're here in your country and so, we obviously come here for the culture. The place. We come here for the beauty. We come here for the history. And I want to thank you officially for your friendship for so many years and, uh, for the, you know, like collaboration and the respect we have for each other. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.